Hello and welcome to the 11th episode of my Beagle Standard Build Log. I'm Dieter and this video will be all about the calibration and dialing in of the settings for the printer. We finalized our build, uh, so that's pretty much the only thing we need to do before we can actually print. So without any further delay, I would say, let's get started. Before we actually start to calibrate the printer, what we first need to do is screw out these calibration screws by a couple of turns. So we actually have a little bit of uh, calibration room up and down of these screws. There, that should do. That should give me about one and a half millimeters of play on the screws. So what we now need to do is switch on our printer, get Prontoface uh, running, and then first we're going to check if the axes are moving the right direction. So let's connect. Now what we're first going to do is move the z-axis by up by one millimeter. It should go fairly slow and just a little bit and all three axes should move simultaneously so this will go up in a straight line. That actually looks more than uh, a millimeter, way more, but I believe it's trying to home itself now so hand on the power button but just let it do what it wants to do. Yeah. So now it homes until this one uh, actually homes. I believe we can try and move by one and move down by one millimeter now. That looks more like one millimeter. We can do that again. Move it up by one millimeter. That looks good. And what we can also try is home now. That can be a little bit violent, but let's see. Yeah, that looks better. And we can probably move it down by one millimeter at a time now. Yeah, that looks good. So if we try to home it now, perfect. So, now that step's complete. We actually have functioning amp switches. We have uh, functioning uh, carriages. The motors all run uh, in the correct direction. So, that all pretty much looks good. What we now need to do is measure the height between the nozzle and the print bed. That can be a little bit hard, but Let's try it this way. Close to 21 centimeters, including the lead on the on the ruler. So we now need another ruler to check how much space it actually is. That's about seven millimeters. So we should we should uh, be able to dial this in at slightly more than that, that, so we can actually calibrate a little bit. Uh, so I think I will set it up for 22 centimeters. For that we need to disconnect protoface again. Go to the morning software, firmware. Now we need to find the Z home POS parameter, which should be, let's see, Xeon POS. It's put to zero, but I can put it to 22 centimeters, which is 220 millimeters. Save. And then upload. So now that's done. We need pronto face again. Connect. Jesus. Jesus. What the heck? Okay. 
Good. So now we got our uh, course height uh, dialed in. The carriages are all homed. We're going to lower the nozzle by uh, first like 200 millimeters, which should give me uh, a little piece be, uh, above the bed, but that should be okay. Well, that's 20 centimeters. It still looks good. We have plenty of space underneath the bed. So let's do another centimeter. That's 21. It was too much. Home again. Twenty-one. Now we start advancing by just a millimeter at a time until we're right up, uh, right above the bed, and then we go even finer by 0.1 of a millimeter until the nozzle just touches the bed. So let's start by millimeters. So I'm. 21.6 centimeters from the home switch and I'm really close to the bed now. Actually I think if I advance by uh, one, uh, uh, 0.1 of a millimeter more then I actually touch the bed. So let's try. That sounds like it. So that's 216.3. Rise it again. Disconnect. To our firmware, two one six point three like that. Save again, and then upload. It's actually important to save every now and then. Uh, I actually save every after every uh, change I do in the configuration.h file because I noticed that sometimes if I don't do that, the change isn't propagated uh, in, the compi uh, in uh, compiling the, the firmware, but this worked just fine. So we connect again, on the printer, and then now if we actually start uh, advancing down more, it should stop uh, right at the bed where we uh, put our uh, um, uh, z-home pos value. So let's see. That sounds good. I hear, I hear a slight tick and there it stops. So that looks good. So let's try moving uh, a little bit in the x direction. Let's see how the positioning is there. Looks pretty good. Oh, that looks actually pretty good. Mm. Let's try that in the y direction as well. Ooh, that's a way off. So it pretty uh, it looks pretty much good. Now let's just heat up the bed and see if anything actually changed because, well, heat can actually expand stuff. And uh, so let's just check it out. Yep. This actually looks all pretty good. So let's switch off the heater and the bed again. Let's cool down. So now we have our printer dialed in. The height and everything is uh, pretty much okay now. So now it's time for uh, our first test print. Um, first test prints are always uh, calibration uh, items. So go to Thingiverse and download some uh, configuration files of your liking. I will download a 40mm cube and there's this essential 
calibration set, which I will also, uh, also download. So now we downloaded our uh, calibration objects. Uh, now it's time to go to our printer software, which in my case uh, is Rapporteur, because I uh, like it better than Protoface. I set Rapporteur up like this. So it's a roster printer, circular shape. Home X and Y zero. Home Z is max. Printable radius 220. Printable height 216.1 millimeters. Uh, connection is all about the com, and I believe this is all pretty much irrelevant. Okay, then we go to object placement, add object, find our test object, just a 40 millimeter cube. So there we have our cube on our print bed. Now we go to Slicer, uh, Configuration, these are the more important settings, Filament and Cooling. Save this as well, Printer Settings, Extruder 1, 0.3 mm Nozzle, that's correct. We don't need to do this. Retraction length 3 millimeters. Let's put this to circular. Diameter to 20. Yeah, that looks good. So let's call this 0.3. Puzzle. Print settings. Higher height. So now we dial the slicer and we just press the button slice with slicer. This one. And it will calculate the layers. Of course, we cannot print yet because there's no filament. So let's load up the spool and see what happens. I've got a little bit of test filament. Nice and translucent, actually. So now I loaded up the filament up till uh, it couldn't go any further. Now I'm heating up the extruder. I'm doing that by manual control. And then we'll first uh, extrude a little bit when it's warm. So we can actually check if there's any filament coming out of the nozzle. And then we will try and do our first test print. Now, there's our first little bit of filament. There you go. So now it works. Let's see how it prints. So yesterday I spent a lot of time uh, over at Rapper World uh, because I was uh, I was certain that my uh, first calibration I did at home, which I videoed, was uh, well. It was pretty okay. I uh, had the feeling it could be better, and I was right. Uh, they introduced me into the dark magic called uh, Delta calibration, which is a uh, very uh, fun and uh, complex uh, business so you should really read up on the internet for, uh, for that. Uh, there's a couple of things I can already share with you. Um, the uh, default firmware that I downloaded had uh, settings for the extruder uh, that were way too high. Uh, the step per millimeter setting for the extruder motor was around 700 steps per millimeter which is severely over extruding, which uh, obviously uh, resulted in uh, skipping steps on the stepper motor. I got it dialed down to 180, so 180. And now it doesn't click anymore, it sounds pretty good actually. It puts out a decent amount of, uh, of filament. So yeah, that looks pretty good. 
Um, another thing I uh, found out was I actually discovered that the uh, bed mounts are a little bit too high, so you cannot print all the way to the uh, extremities of your uh, print beds uh, uh, close to these screws. So when I mentioned that to Ripper World, they gave me these, li these little plates and they are testing with them, uh, with them right now. So I got a set of them and I'm going to test with them as well. Uh, they should be uh, a, little lo uh, a little lower, so they should give me uh, somewhat mo uh, some more print space on my print bed. So I'm going to uh, mount these uh, later on and see what happens. Um, furthermore, they assisted me uh, with the bowling and scaling parameters. Uh, that's like really dark magic and, dark magic and fine tuning. And they also assisted me on the fine tuning of the uh, calibration screws. And I got it dialed in pretty nicely now. Not good enough because I want it dialed in to pretty much perfection. But uh, that will be a pretty lengthy process. As you can see, it is printing now. It is printing a calibration uh, disc which um, shows. Um, if you have bowling or scaling issues, and if there's any issue with uh, the uh, axis uh, uh, calibration. Um, yeah, it's looking better and better each time I try it. Um, you should definitely go through uh, some of these uh, calibration steps. There's a nice uh, set of calibration stuff on Thingiverse. Uh, you should obviously, of course, try to test uh, test, cu uh, test cube, but there's also some uh, specific delta uh, calibration test tools. Um, I'm going to print a couple of more of these, uh, but I'm not going to video them because it's frankly boring to to watch. Um, but yeah, um, so far I'm pretty happy actually with the printer. Uh, the first results look pretty nice, uh, uh, so I can't wait to uh, put some actual prints out. But um, as far as this video goes, I think this will be pretty much it for this video and for the vlog series. So, um, yeah, I would say bye.